Good evening and welcome everyone. Hello, Stephanie. Hi, guys. Hi, Matt. It's been a very long time. It has. It's been way too long. <laughs> Glad that you're able to join us. I'm sure everyone understands this time of year or anyway, family comes first. You've got commitments. You've got to do that. Hi, Jay. Hi, Sean. Ranger Ron. JD Atkinson. And everyone else in the room, give us a quick shout out. Where are you coming in from? Have you got a shot in this this week's competition? Um, let's make sure the chat is interactive this week. We have a great selection of images for you and I had put up on the Instagram and we discussed it on the last show that had like 170 entries, whether we should go through all of them or just the selection. But finally, we got just under 50 entries, so we will go through all of them. Um, no live show next week, so stay tuned on social media and over at mattgranger.com slash live. That's where I'll update you when the new theme comes through. But this week, before we do our little catch-up stuff, let me just let everyone know what we're up to. So the theme is your best shot of 2021, so it just needs to have been shot this year, shot by you, one shot per person. And we're going to go through, give you our feedback on them as a photographer and a model. It's just two people's opinion, though, so take it or leave it. Um, but I <laughs> tend to think that hearing feedback on other people's photos is just as valuable as getting feedback on your own because it's still another viewpoint. So stick around even once we've checked out your shot. Now, in terms of prizes, let me just find my cursor. First prize Ooh, will, prizes. Uh, we just put up on pre-sale a couple of days ago, Steph and my final course that we've filmed together, final release for the year, which is a steampunk cosplay shoot. It's um, over three hours and 20 minutes long, something like that. It comes with presets and raw files and the whole shooting process, and including editing. Uh, we rented out this pretty fantastic mansion in Manhattan to go through and shoot that one around the middle of the year actually and it came together really well so you can if you're one of our winners you'll have the choice of that or if you're not into artistic nudity you can choose the dramatic single light portraiture class which has Johanna and Steph and Yasmin and all kinds of uh, familiar faces in it um, and that's all about how to get dramatic results using just one light. Oh, look at that. Now we have Steph on Steph and Matt on a background that looks just like this one. But that background we just made with <laughs> a gelled light. Was it a gelled light? It was a single light. So maybe we, I can't remember on that one anymore. Maybe we were using the ambient light to light up a colored wall or something. Um, and runners up can choose between Steph and my art nude uh, black tape project shoot where we created kind of a swimsuit looking thing on Steph. Can't scroll too far on that page. Or again, for the non nude <laughs> folks, you can choose my guide for Lightroom. So Lightroom for photographers, how to get set up and using that nice and fast. So that's going to be our prizes. We don't have a set number of prizes to give out, but most likely it'll be one winner and a few runners up. So let's just see how we go. But perhaps more importantly than that, how are you, Steph? I know, you know, they don't know, but we have been chatting outside of the live show. But <laughs> tell the people, how are you? And hopefully save a lot of the family drama for our private chat, because I know you've yeah. got a lot on your plate. Well, my answer is always like super busy. A lot of things have been happening, but I guess like more positive stuff. Uh I, me and like the art school dropouts team, we're going to actually be going up to Connecticut tomorrow to shoot with um, a couple of stuntmen up there just as like a test fight. So really excited about that because I like shooting behind the camera. Uh, we actually did wedding videography this past weekend hmm. and I forgot to tell you that actually. Uh, it was really funny because we didn't realize I mean, I think this is a great chance for me to ask this question to everyone who's watching. Anybody that does like wedding photography or wedding vi videography, tell me if you guys have ever had complications or I guess hostile interactions with bands. Oh. Not DJs, but bands. Because we didn't realize that we entered this war between, I guess, the photographers and videographers and bands. Um, 
because we only worked with like on a wedding that like one wedding that had a ban. So what, and that what's the actually issue that they want to toxic. run the reception timing and not have you poking your nose in or? So basically it seems like the uh, the bands, they feel like they're entitled to, I guess, wedding food. And if they don't get fed, they'll actually throw a fit. Yeah. And if they see the photographers or videographers eat any of their food, well, it's not their food. It's supposed to be a shared food. But if they see that, they like have a tendency to, I guess, get angry and start fights. Because that happened with us the one time, but it was it happened to the photographers before us, the videographers, and the photographers told us like what had happened. We're like, all right, we don't want to deal with that. So we just kind of wedding food normally hung out plate? the photographer. So if they're giving a plate per person, it's not that's your plate. Yeah, but these bands still eat everything and say like oh i thought it was ours and it was this extra i see well let us know folks that's not yeah. something that i've encountered thankfully and yeah that's oh okay so that's interesting but it, yeah because we were talking to veteran like photographers some guests don't feed their help you know wh whoever you are mm -hmm. so it's basically up to the the couple i would have thought um yeah Hi, JD, Mike, Rob, Sean, Yaquin, uh, Eric, Leith, Ranger Ron. Good to see you all. Um, yeah, what a bunch of divas. So, sorry to hear that. You getting ready for the holidays? Uh, it was the interesting. Holidays. <laughs> uh, I guess. I don't know. I feel like during this time of year, it's like super hectic when it comes to just like, like art school dropouts and like just like busy work and then family obligations mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah but i'm excited what is hopefully next year i want to do more weddings though i want to see if this like is actually true at weddings if bands are consistently like like that it's a, um, it's a weird I, motivation oh my gosh. to, to want to do more <laughs> it is but there's something about like shooting weddings joey says it's kind of like the nfl for like videography, I guess. Oh, the major. Because it, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. But it was really funny because like this, we're the type of videographers that cry behind camera. And Joy and I, because they had so I many dances back camera. to back, we had the gimbal. <laughs> we had like the gimbal on our, with our camera and we would literally pass it back and forth for like 30 minutes. My arms were felt so jacked like the next day but You're it hurt pumped. so bad <laughs> you had the palm yeah <laughs> we were so we were so hype afterwards we we're like yeah we're the best Ugh. we like chest bumped and everything you should have just fought the band i mean make it a real night <laughs> yeah it's just interesting to hear <laughs> true all right let's pick that up folks if you have but how are you oh well thank you so much for asking uh, yeah, yeah, I got in a fight with the drummer the other day. Um, I got some lacerations oh. from the sticks. Uh, no, everything's good here. <laughs> oh, one thing I have to note, though, being that this is a day early, and thanks to those who have tuned in to join us on an earlier day, at the moment our building has uh, three apartments near us renovating, so there's all kinds of construction noise going on, and it's they're allowed to do it on Saturdays now, so it's 10 a.m. Saturday here, so... There's a chance we're going to hear construction through this. So if so, I will mute myself and ask Stephanie to take the reins until the sounds are gone. So you guys don't have to. Wait, with that. still? Well, it's an old building. It's probably going to be never ending. And they're just putting up scaffolding around the building now. So the outside could be being worked on for months. Don't even know what they're doing. Um, it's a really cool, wow. like, 1960s Art Deco-style building, but it means everything's old, and anyone who buys it because Hong Kong's so expensive, you'll renovate it. So if you're going to spend, like, a million bucks on it, then you might as well spend one-tenth of that to make it really nice. Actually, mo you can't get a, an apartment for a million bucks around here. Um, but anyway, so there's a lot of renovation going on. The one above us, I think, sold for three. And that's not because it's bougie. Like I said, it's 1960s and dilapidated, but it's big. Anyway, what? but I'm good. Uh, cats are good. Kate's good. 
whether he's been perfect, sunny, and like just almost t-shirt and shorts weather most days, so it's been great. Um, yes, let's look at some photos. Give some people some feedback. Uh, I don't want to turn this into a big hug fest or have Steph crying behind the camera, but this is like the last live we're likely to do this year, and I really do appreciate you guys who get involved on the live show and on the channel. I do read almost all of the comments. I'm familiar with your names. I see how your work develops over the years. So I'm actually, in a way, it would be nice to get 500 entries for this competition, but I'm actually really glad we got a manageable number so that we can go through all of them, except for the couple who didn't rename the files and that kind of thing or entered multiple shots. Um, but yes, so thank you to all of you. Now let's take a look at your shots and give away some prizes. So, oh, that's Stephanie. I just put that in as a reminder about the new steampunk course. So that the course oh. is actually <laughs> going live on January 1st, same as I think last year we were putting up the new posing guide with Steph and Johanna. Um, oh. So it, the course is all done, it's made, it's ready to go, but put it up for uh, a soft launch whilst I get some testers and stuff, and then it will be ready to stream and download January 1st. Um, first shot then, if I can select the right window. Kadunk. Here we go, Adam Anderson. Okay, um, now there was a few entries that I feel like we've seen that shot or a shot from that series before and I feel like Adam has entered a shot like this for you know, the boat's eye view in this kind of a scene. Now I'm gonna try not, to, no I'm lying, I was about to say I'm gonna try not to be too pedantic but straight off the bat it's just, it's not level, you know, it's, I can, you can see that it's not level, so quick level. Yeah, I was going to say, is it leveled? I, it's hard to tell with, like, the foliage on the left, and then yeah. it's just... It's, um, you know, I get it, and I don't spend an hour editing every photo myself, but the point of this is to be constructive, and if you're entering a competition to win a prize, I think having exposure about right, level right, having obvious errors avoided is fair enough, especially if this is your favorite shot of the year, then go to that little extra effort. So I think you've controlled the exposure well here, having the sun coming straight into frame, you've got the flare going up there nicely. I think as I said in the last time I looked at one of these shots, it's a very, you do get a sense of the peace and the calmness that you were probably feeling at the time. I don't know about the way that the space is filled, however. I kind of feel like between the boat and the tree, there's just so much open area that we're not really getting anything. Maybe selecting a different vantage point and having, you know, maybe a wider angle with the boat on more of a diagonal so you could fill up the foreground of the shot a little bit more. Could work. You could put your little painted toenails in the front of the boat, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, how about we do uh, three each, step, and if you have any feedback, then you just jump right on in. Oh, I do want your thoughts on this one. Adrian Moss. Sounds good. Yeah. Look at these The next bees. one? Um, what now, I the... assume bees don't bite birds or birds aren't affected by their toxin. Um, and I, maybe he's just perching there or maybe he's actually grabbing some honey. Who knows? Um, I think it's really cool, and I know you can't control nature, but the only two things would be, of course, if it wasn't overlapping his eye would be ideal. Um, and if the swarm were kind of more evenly around the animal. Now, I'm not suggesting like cloning in extra bees to put more on the left of frame, but actually bringing in the left of frame so that there's less open space would already give the impression of it being more encircled. And this is the kind of situation where once you've got the shot lined up, firing off 50 shots to get different combinations of where all the bees are is worthwhile. And also uh, some different depths of field. If you had all the bees in perfectly sharp focus, like, let's say what were you shooting at here? Um, F7.1. So if you'd been at F9 or F11, would the background still have been sufficiently soft but got more bees in sharp focus? That's something to think through. I know you probably didn't want to push your ISO too far. 
But I'm gonna give that a pick because in all my wildlife age, I don't think I've seen a bird of prey being swarmed by bees. Now bees don't freak you out, do they? Yes. Ugh. They're bugs, yeah. and they fly, and they buzz yeah. around you. Ugh, it's gross. Um, Alberto <laughs> Coronel. Um, beautiful light. The sequins on the dress really coming to life. Um, I'm kind of torn here because, one, I do really like the ambience and it gives you a real sense of indoors and outdoors and the way you've framed up the New York sign on the top of the building. I think that's lower east side um, is really cool. But I also kind of feel the way that the light naturally is falling off and not getting her feet makes the kind of the bottom quarter of the right quarter kind of a nothingness in the shot that an option for a crop would be coming right up in something like this right in on her, still getting the building, actually putting it nicely on a third, still getting the curtains, and you know that's an option for you anyway. I think the, the wide shot worked, but I think the tight shot works really quite well as well. I'm, I'm on a little pick for Yester. That's another pick for me. Stephanie, what do you think about Andy Plavny's shot? Yes. Oh, I like the two colors, that's for sure. I feel like if she had her face more to her right and camera left, that way there, I guess, like her hair, or even move her hair back, I think that would help um, shine some more light on her face. But I like how simple it is. Okay. I just and plus there's like a white. I don't know how I feel about about like the central white in the back, yeah. but besides that, yeah. Now it's hard to know exactly, but it's interesting when you're mixing gels. That white could actually be the area that the blue and the pink are transitioning between each other and like canceling each other out, or it could be a specular highlight of one of the lights that just didn't have a whole lot of color in it. Um. Yeah. Armano Raphael. Whoa. That's cool. Um, I'm assuming that's like just a building under construction. Um, but what I really like about this shot is the person on the phone. I just like how it's like really silhouetted. Um, yeah, I think if anything, I wish this structure that's silhouetted in front was gone. But besides that, I really like it. Oh, should I pick? Oh, okay, let me pick. <laughs> <laughs> um, next time, God Armando, damn it. <laughs> please try and send in a high-res file. This one being so low, we can't really tell what's in proper focus. Um, and this one from Carsten. Oh, that's cute. Understanding. Because they're standing under. Uh, sorry, I was just zooming standing. in right now. You get it? Standing under. Oh, that made mm. it so much better. I guess the only thing is I wish the woman had pointed with her left arm instead of her right. Um, I have a feeling this was a candid. That's a really good candid then. Um, but yeah, I like it. I like it too. I think... What do you think about the amount of space left and right? More or less? I, at, at first, I I thought maybe just like cropping it in would be better, but I actually think I kind of like it further out like this. I think the crop is fine for me. Almost centered. What if we brought it so the space on either side is about the same? Something like that. Oh, I can't even tell. Nice. Um, yeah, nice candid. Uh, was that your three? Maybe that was two. Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, Bob H. Wow. I have a feeling that may be a composite. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Um, I don't know if it's meant to be mystical or cute or 
funny, but I find it funny and cute. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, points for putting together. I'm going to guess this is your son, nephew, grandson, something, and you're trying out editing techniques and you've come up with this, putting him in the, the magic eight ball or whatever it is, the, what do you call it, a snow globe? Um, yeah. So just I'll make a simple tip on making this kind of a shot if you're trying to make it look like old buddy here was actually in a snow globe is try to match your lighting between your subject and the, the two different composite elements. So here the kid is in soft top-down light casting, well not soft, but reasonably soft top-down lighting and the, you know, the the terracotta thing is in quite harsh lighting from either side. So matching the lighting and the color of the lighting will help um, make it look like a bit more of a seamless put together. I would be so scared if I was stuck in a snow globe, just saying. I think about it every day. <laughs> I know, before I go to sleep every night, it's like, Please. Please don't let me no. wake up in a snow globe again. <laughs> Brian Aitkins. Now, I'm going to trust that this was not near a 200-foot drop-off. Um, nice use of added light to bring your subject back. She's an amazing athlete. Just look at the muscle tone through her shoulders and arms. Um, putting her torso and leg against that... Um, Almost silhouetted mountain works really nicely. Um, yeah, I mean, hiking there, I'm hoping not in that outfit. Um, putting all of this together, yeah. lighting it. I'm sure there was a lot of work that went into this shot. I think it's really nicely done, and that's a pick. Well done, Brian. Um, it's really good. I hope you don't have to, sh like, you didn't shoot anywhere dangerous, but geez, just the bugs. Just to get up there. Oh, did you see I sent you something on Instagram from Queensland? Yeah, I I read like I read the like I guess the little text and I was like, yeah, I'm not opening that. Ah, you baby. Nope. Um, it was quite funny. <laughs> Actually, I'll do this picture and then we'll come back to it. So Bruce Ashmore. <laughs> so I can see what you're going for here. Your the main focus is the Butler amusements, and then the sun like the the flare from the the sunburst on the the light on the pole there. Then you're trying to bring in the magical bunny riding a unicorn, because why wouldn't you? Um, but I think getting rid of the bunny, the composition may work a little bit better. And then two options. The way you've done it at this time of night is helping us, I'm guessing there's a huge crowd in the foreground. Yep. So is working well for that. And I, oh, it looks like you're using a super wide angle lens because we've got the actual barrel going on there. Um, but if you had shot this, so this was taken at 9 p.m., let's say, I don't know what time sunset is, wherever you are, Bruce, but um, right around that twilight time when all the lights are on, but there's still some color in the sky, you could potentially have a really beautiful, colorful shot because sometimes these lights against a black background can be just a bit stark and you really need something dramatic to hold it against so much negative space. So apparently I'm getting a reputation for being a crop monster, so I'm just gonna roll with that. Having said that, if you are going to go for it being all black, then I would actually bring the, the foreground down further because we can see the people there just a bit that it's distracting. So if you're using the latest Lightroom, it's now a linear gradient mask that you could use nice and easily. I think mine is currently set to plus exposure, but we'll fix that. So something like that, 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 saturation doesn't matter. Uh, just to bring it down a little bit. So just jumping out for a second, the thing I sent to Steph, you don't even see the the thing that was scaring you in the video, Steph, but it was the Queensland, oh. which is this, one of the states of Australia, health minister doing a press conference, like an update on how the COVID situation is there. And during the press conference, she got a huntsman spider on her leg or shoe or something like that. And huntsmen can be like this big. 
So during the press conference, you hear that she's saying, so what we need to do now is, and then you hear off camera someone saying, uh, excuse me, minister, you have a giant spider on you. <laughs> she looked down and said, can somebody please take care of that for me? See, I can stay calm under pressure, but if it comes in my face, I'm out of here. <sighs> so come to <laughs> Queensland. We have COVID and Huntsman. <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, okay, as long as you don't see the spider, but oh my gosh, I, I would be like, someone just kill me now. Kill me now. I don't want another second being like aware that this spider is on me. Okay, so you're not coming to Australia. Um, Apparently not. <laughs> okay, if you do have questions, folks, then please hit me with the hashtag Ask Matt so that I can see it. Otherwise, I may miss it. Um, I'm not seeing um, any questions come through right now. We got some uh, thanks from Laith. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Um, all right. So, Stephanie, we'll jump back to you and your cool. shots start with Chris. Ooh. Okay. Uh, I like this. I kind of wish it wasn't so close. I think I would have liked it wider because I feel like soccer, it's just one of those sports that's this very large field. But then again, I get it if there were people in the way. It is a different uh, perspective. I feel like a lot of times the ball isn't touching the kickers in a, the kickers. a, in a photo. But this one the is... The kickers. Wait. <laughs> the kickers. Just like, <laughs> the soccer players. I just hadn't heard of it put that way. So It's like they're players <laughs> until they're near the ball. Then they're kickers. Tennis players are now yeah, kickers. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Ball hitters. In particular, wow. um, but I actually like it. I think it's a pretty good job. I think like we've been watching Chris's work like for a while, and it's been improving. Yes. Yeah, so I'm not sure about this perspective, but he mentioned in his email uh, that for this kind of a game, you can't shoot from the field. So this is from the grandstand. That's why we're kind of looking down on them a little bit. Okay. Nice. Actually, having seen his work progress over the year and shooting softball and all kinds of different sports, I think it's worth a pick because a lot of the feedback we've given, I think he's taken and this is, I think, the strongest shot that he's entered for the year. So for that, well done. Um, Klaus Luke. Well, hard day at work. Um, I really like it. I like the, the light up top. And just like the lines, um, pick. I don't know. I just, I just really like this. Okay, my two feedback would be probably uh, don't be so low because the light sitting on his head is a bit much. The I think there's maybe a bit too much space above him and to the left. And if this is meant to be, so this says Cuban workshop. Nothing about this says Cuba to me. So if it's meant to be, unless you're telling a story and this is one of many images and, you know, what they're machining is part of a bigger story. Otherwise, this is just any factory anywhere for me. Mm. Is that your three? Or you Give us your model thoughts on Danny's show. Uh, oh, okay. Um, ooh. I think... The expression is good. I, I like that it says private property. Um, it's kind of funny. It's just like, oh, she's a rebel, you know, <laughs> trespassing. Uh, <laughs> but I think in terms of the pose, I think leading into the, I guess, the railing and then like bending her arms when it's just so straight, like her arms are so straight. Her like lifted leg is almost at like a perfect right angle. And then her back leg is also perfectly straight. I think... Uh, just adding the lean so would be nice and it draws attention to the would, private property. Yeah, and then so bending that knee, bringing her shoulders closer. And legs. That would also give a bend through the, the hips as well. Yeah, and then just on your toes for your, like, boot tips. Uh, back foot on the floor. Okay, there you yeah. go. Thanks, Calgo. Yeah. <laughs> Darren Melrose and a 
super fit. This looks like a, after a fitness competition type, um, well, a portrait shoot after a fitness comp because they're just the kind of uh, outfits that the fitness competitors wear with all of the Swarovski beads and everything all over them. Um, and look, I think you were going for a dark, moody kind of portrait, so it works. It's probably more shadowy than I would go for. And it's not... Uh, the interesting thing is for... It's kind of a sultry, soft look rather than one a pose that shows off her muscularity. She's obviously incredibly fit, but the classic poses for a fitness model are... Not at all like this, like playing with the underwear is a lingerie type pose, um, which is totally fine if you, because on the day she will have had so many photos doing, you know, poses, shoulders out to show her lats and her biceps and her all the other muscles that I can't name. So as a soft uh, option, I think works well. I think the lighting on is fantastic on her face. I think maybe the light was actually crafted for the face and the body was just kind of where it fell, but it works pretty quite well overall. Um, boob alert, David Kelm. So, we've all had that dream where we go to high school and realize that we're naked, right? It came true for this young lady. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> so this looks like an abandoned school of some sort. Um, I mean, the balance in the shot is nice. Focus is great. The white balance is maybe a little cool. Um, other than that, I think it's there's no distractions. It, um, I think it would probably work quite well as a black and white. With a little contrast. Yeah, I think I actually prefer it as a black and white to the, to the color. I'm not sure about the rest of you, but... Um, yeah, nice shot. I'd like to know the story behind it. So I think a little contrast and then consider black and white all color. Deepa Brata. Oh, I love these kind of bird's eye view shots. I've got my drone out ready to take out for some shooting in the next week or so. Um, it's not wide enough that it kind of becomes abstract because it's quite clear that it's you know, what it is that we're looking at. And I don't think the bottom left of frame is doing you any favors. I think that's a distraction. So, and also, well, the I don't mind the open white space because it reinforces that we're on snow and I actually really like seeing some sleds. But if there was a way that you could have framed it up to get rid of that and keep in the rest, so let me just take off my constrained proportions. Um, no, I don't want to get too, yeah, it's getting too close at the bottom side, ah, but you could bring it in like that. But to basically to have it be all filled with just white and color, I feel like is more impactful, but I really like the concept. Nice one, uh, deeper brighter. Oh, well, hello. Roland, oh, is that the whole shot? I thought I'm zoomed in too far. I feel like I'm in it, which is actually a very cool <laughs> effect. Um, Roland, Sh Steph, how do you say his surname? Cyker? Exactly. Nope, I don't know. This is why I don't do names. <laughs> um, I, Roland, hi. <laughs> I really like this one. I think it could do with a bit more depth of field, but other than that, um, it says this was already a three second exposure, so it must have been maybe early morning. Good time to not have uh, hard shadows in the shot. Um, I really like the perspective. It's, um, yeah, it's interesting, all of the converging lines. I think the way you framed it up with the handrail in the bottom left and then the stairway is really cool. I think uh, Roland was one of our winners last week as well. So congratulations, Roland. Really cool oh. shot. Now, I feel like I've done my three. So let's go back to Steph and some more model feedback on Eric's shot. Cool. Oh, I feel, 
I feel like these types of like I guess underground walkway. I'm assuming it's underground. I don't know, but it's like, oof. Sometimes it's so smelly. <laughs> Sorry, I was like under one of these like recently, like two weeks ago, and I was like, ugh. But I think the pose wise. I think she's too far to camera left. Like, it looks like she's just trying to hug the wall with her legs. I feel like if she actually had her, like, her body centrally in the stairway and then kind of played around with the the walls as if they're kind of, like, closing in, I think that that would be a lot more interesting. And plus, her top is also very interesting and in how it's, like, the rib cage. I think that there's also, like... I think having a more forward-facing shot or even really highlighting that would be better. So there's... Um, also, too much headspace, I think. So there's... Two, yeah, great feedback. There's two thoughts that I had. I like the shot. Uh, well, there's three thoughts, actually. One is... Um, well, and they're all kind of tied to what Steph was saying, but one was, I think, you know, you've probably often heard me talk about this on the channel, folks, that I will often shoot and have my camera show me a black and white preview because it's easier to see the shadow details in some situations. On this one, I think if we switch it to black and white, there could actually be some interesting, subtle shadows there that will work better for him. I also think it, this was shot at 16 mil, that actually if you'd gone into like 24 mil and got a frame like this, uh, well, we're not gonna get the full effect here because at 16 you're getting more distortion than you would have if you'd zoomed into 24. But a frame like this would probably work better. And then to Steph's point, if you wanted to be at 16 mil, there was a shot we did in Steampunk, Steph, I don't know if it was so long ago, you may not remember, but where you were wearing the underbus corset and the goggles and I had you doing some crazy poses yes. and I was up really close with a wide angle lens using the wide angle yeah. distortion and the perspective distortion to make it kind of maniacal because that bodysuit to me reminds me of the bad guys in Karate Kid chasing Daniel around. They had the skeleton Oh thing my, on. the skeleton like costume, <laughs> like really? But so for me, it has kind of a horror, well, not a horror, but a, a bit of a scary vibe to it. So if you had her you know, leaning in on either side of the the walkway with your wide angle, I think there could be an interesting way to fill up that space. But I do still think here with a bit of a tighter crop, this already works quite well. I don't know if Steph's had a chance to see my crops yet. Um, so that was Steph's, so we are on you now. So what do you think of this cheeky bridge? Oh, it's a bridge. Okay, what I really like, is that a perfect circle? Is there a tool that you could check to see if it creates like a perfect circle? Because let's just say I don't know. Almost. That's cool. Okay, I I think it's perfect enough, and I do really like that there's a hot air balloon, Sweet. like within that frame. And well I feel frame. like yeah, I feel like a, a closer crop, I think would be better for this. But still, I, I really like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Um, I like it a lot. I'm, I would. I agree with what Steph said, but I think it would actually work better ruining the perfect circle and being closer to the ground so you kind of uh, have a shot more across the water so you minimize the amount of space you need to take with the water so you could get your horizon off the center, have, uh, you know, it the horizon above center by doing it like that. But um, yeah, agree with everything Steph said. Um, what about Janice and the amazing disappearing lady? Oh, um, I think I think using any light and then also wearing glasses can get kind of difficult because shadow. it'll create the shadow over the person's eyes, which kind of happened here. I think that you could actually do a better lighting setup with this. Her expression is great. Her makeup is awesome. Like, she's beautiful. I, I just think that maybe it's a, t it's a bit too dark. Um, and play around a little bit more in terms of the angle of the light so that way it doesn't create that harsh of a shadow in terms of, like, her nose and, like, the glasses. Agree. 
this, you might want to check out Janus, my dramatic single light course I did with Steph because we go through a lot of like this, how to use a single light to create the kind of look that you want. I'm guessing you made the final shot so dark, which in my opinion is just too dark, uh, because you were having trouble with the light spilling onto the background. So simple trick is bring your light closer to her or bring her and the light further from the wall and you'll be able to get the kind of contrast and lighting you want on her without it impacting your background. Um, yeah, actually, even with the glasses, if she were to tilt her head and actually look towards the light, it would also help in terms of the shadows of the, the glasses. I will. Very good feedback. Let's jump back and do the time warp and check out any questionies that we have coming through. I just got feedback from my wife. You look so serious. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I looked um, like I'm having <laughs> fun, folks. I, I, maybe it's my shaved look. I look very serious now. Um, Laith's comment was, uh, Matt, thank you for your vids and the great information. You were the first photographer I followed and learned from, and you were the most important influence in my learning photography journey. Well, that's amazing because you are entering fantastic shots all the time, and I just yeah. keep my camera, so don't learn that habit from me. Um, but that's really, really lovely to hear. Thank you, Leith. I, like I said, I read you guys' comments. I've seen you around the channel. I've seen your amazing work developing and how often you're involved in that. I really do appreciate that. John Musket, Steph, Merry Christmas. And if Steph hates bugs so much, how does she handle flies? Oh, I have like one of those electric tennis looking like uh, fly zappers. Yeah, I have no shame. <sighs> <That's the worst. laughs> um, Merry Christmas to you, John. Um, yes, I don't think you <laughs> would like Australian summers very much at all. What about snakes? They're not bugs. Less of an issue? Snakes I'm okay with. Okay. Yeah, less of an issue. Is this the bugs? I don't know. It's just... Mm. Um, JF, what do you make of the fact that the newly announced 28-75 f2.8 is not an S lens versus the 24-70 f4 S lens. Um, I would hold judgment until I've tested it, but I think you have, but in your question lies the answer to why the lens exists and the differentiation. So Nikon uses now for their Z lenses the S designation to say that it's their premium range of lenses. So the 24-70 f4, despite being small and light and relatively cheap, is optically really, really good. And the 28-75, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to be faster aperture, but a non-S lens. I think that pretty much tells us that it's going to be not as optically perfect, um, that it may have more flare or vignetting or less contrast. I, they haven't put out a bad lens at all yet though, so I think it will be okay, fine, even great, just not outstandingly excellent. Um, but given that the F4 is smaller, lighter, and cheaper than the 28 to 75, unless you need the extra stop of light, you know, for me, I own the 2.8, I'm filming with it right now, hello. Um, but I, have also picked up recently the F4. Um, I ordered it to be fair before the 28 to 75 was announced, but decided to stay with my order because for video F4 is enough and the size and weight savings are worth it for me. Yes. Um, any other questions here? Don't forget to ask some questions of Steph. Non bug related ones are also welcome. Uh. Um, <laughs> And let us know what you're doing over the holidays, folks. Are you going anywhere? Are you shooting something? What's your plan? And I don't know, we're up to J in our list of entries. So I guess we're getting close to halfway. So let's jump in and continue um, with James Day. Oh, ho, ho. Um, I mean, what a place. What a place to be. I'm not going to crop and turn everything to black and white, but there is, I think, a, a potential here <laughs> for more selective coloring. And you, the, I think the blue tones 
you've really pushed the sky, which has pushed the snow to be too blue, and then the blue through this middle layer of rock is also over the top. So rather than doing a global adjustment on blue, I would do it selectively where you want it, maybe having uh, a different kind of blue on the, the snow area, the blue in the sky. I know at those altitudes it can <clears throat> appear super blue to your eye, but this has clearly been pushed in post. But if you wanted to, let's just take a look in the black and white, I think you can do a nice edit to separate out the three levels of mountain here and get something really dramatic going on there as well. But beautiful frame, I'd love to know where you were. Um, Jay Frandano and the Amazing Flying Sisters. Um, very cool, the only thing would be to get a really crisp silhouette, you need it to be fast enough shutter speed to stop any motion blur, and there is some here on the woman, or on their feet basically, which would be the fastest moving part, and on the hair. And you need them perfectly in focus for it to be nice and crisp. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a cool concept. I would, again, probably try with them almost being centered, but not quite. I would probably try to center them. You might find that uh, Dehaze bringing up your highlights a little, bringing the darkest shadows down a little to add a little contrast. Um, it gives it a nice little pop. So that's the little adjustment I made and then that's where we started. So super simple one. Um, here is JQ with lots of vowels in his name. Now we had this shot entered last week, but as a black and white for the monochrome competition. Um, and so my feedback is the same. The only thing would be here now, it looks like that she may be is a beautiful redhead and that contrasts so well with the sea. I wouldn't mind coming in a lot closer to actually see that. If you had a long lens, that would have been the way to do it, but otherwise you could bring it in to be something super close, like maybe not quite that crop, but something along the lines of that, so she's more prominent in the scene there. Sweet. Question, what's the story with the stool, though? Um, yes, I think I asked that last time. It could be art, which doesn't need a reason, or it could be one of those camping chairs that has a hole cut in it and she's going into the ocean to go to the toilet. I'm going to go with art. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what do you think of wow. this one from Joey Stiff? Ooh, I like this one. Um, I think the nice reflections on the glasses. It's and like the the bokeh is nice. The bokeh, um, framing is good. Uh, if anything, I maybe would pull it in from the right. But honestly, yeah, I like this one too. Is it in focus? It looks a little maybe focused. a little bit out of focus. So the only yeah. thing is. And I understand it, Joey, what's making the background look so beautiful is the white balance and the blue hues that you're picking up there. But I think there's a little bit too much blue overall in the shot. You can see it on the mic. I think her skin tone looks a little too blue and even the top. Now, if you're using the latest Lightroom, the subject select, have you seen this, Steph, the new uh, Lightroom version? No, I you're have not. Sorry, Lady was just... She was just on her back and I was like, I have to take a picture. Send it to me. Um, the new Oh, okay. <laughs> go, go. The new subject select is kind of amazing. So here it's detecting the subject. There, well, it's got the mic as well, so we can do the two of them, that's fine. So I would not adjust the exposure like that. Oh, you could bring it up just a tad. Get rid of the dehaze though and you could just warm up her temperature a little bit. Saturation, no. Um, yeah, so you could just do a selective edit on her. Um, what do you think of John Dalston's spooky spooky girl doing her makeup? Oh.
I think just because of like how <laughs> how detailed like I don't know. Uh, I would think I think I would like this shot to be cropped in some more. Yeah, just to kind of focus on like the eyes. Because that one eye. I was going to say, Ooh. I can't look away from it. You know, sometimes really simple subjects yeah. or overly complex subjects can lack something that holds your attention. But that her right camera left eye just holds me. You quickly see the makeup and the freckles, which is nice. But that eye, it's got a tractor beam. I'm going to give it a pick. Ah, oh. oh, shoot, right, pick. Oh, lucky. I think even cropping it in where it's like half her face, like this, that even looks like really cool. That would be scary as shit, but that might then get rid of the hand. But let's just try it because people love it when you crop their work without their consent. Um... <laughs> Maybe. Scary, but you got to pick anyway, John. Yeah. And you, lucky thing, get to give feedback on Lathe's shot. I mean, it's Lathe. Like, it's great work. Is this... That's Australia. Uh, I guess bugs. it's... It's leveled. Ugh. Then it's an automatic no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I, I like the... <laughs> I like the water. I like how you have, like... I don't know the colors in this is beautiful it's like sunset colors and it's like the the sun is bouncing off of like the edge of like i guess the mountain it's pick oh there she goes good job lace i agree with all of that i killing agree with it the pick, but <laughs> i have to say i think you've entered and taken even better shots than that this year still very nice shot Ooh. Is that like a neg? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a compliment, too. Oh, no. It's just like, you did good, but I know you can do better. I've and seen it's like... better. That's not a burn. That's not an Asian <laughs> parent know. feedback on your A- minus <laughs> test result. I'm not doing that. Yeah, I think maybe that's why it kind of like hit me a little bit. Because I was just like, oof. Wow, you got 98% okay, on next your exam. Time. What happened to the other two? <laughs> Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> macrophile. What do you think of Macrophile's Wasserhund? I mean, I love dogs. There's, oh, ladies underneath now. Hi, lady. It's a bit Hi. washed out, though. It looks um, to me like a kind yeah. of either overcast day or twilight shot with added flash and it's catching everywhere. Ah, it, it, sorry, I just bumped my mic. It's. Yeah, it's really washed out. I think even if you just brought your blacks down a little, maybe a cheeky bit of dehaze. Yeah, I think that kind of brings it to life. It really needed some contrast in there. So that's those quick adjustments, and that's how it came in. To me, it looks like a, a how it came in looks like a, a log video frame that hasn't been graded yet. Um, but super cute puppy, bit of a grab shot though. I think you could, yeah, I've yeah. seen better from you this year as well, Macrophile, but super cute. Who's a good boy or girl? What's a hound? Um, <laughs> last one for you then, Steph, uh, Mark Meyer. Oh, that's what I do to try to get my dimples. I just constantly poke my face. Um, I think the lighting is spot on. Uh, she seems to be centered. All right, well. I mean, yeah, pick. <laughs> it's, like, I think it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> Getting to it, Bat, jeez. What, you jump, you used to jump in, but you're off your game today. My turn. I know, I know. <laughs> Matthew Nurbison, I think you have entered this shot before. If not one, very, very similar. Um, I hope my feedback doesn't contradict what I said last time, but I don't think having her sleeve covering part of her beautiful smile really works on this. Um, I think if you move the camera slightly to the right, shooting back on her, you would still get the hand. You'd probably even get more perspective because you would see the length of the sleeve rather than just the hand stretched out. And that would help you close off a bit of the right-hand side of the frame. So I think it's 
a beautiful frame, a really nice pose, but I don't think it's the, the best angle on her. Mike Mina, who's been killing it with, what's this lady's name? Something sister, punk sister, soul sister, something sister. He's ended a lot of shots with her lately. Um, I mean, the hat is very cool. The framing is great. That's a pick. It's a pick from me. You could have jumped over Yeah, the me. pink is nice on like the, like her shoulders, mm. like just to help frame her, like, it's a nice touch. Yeah, and she's wearing yeah. her heart on her, yeah. yeah, outside of her jacket. Is that a heart or is that a little, looks like it could be. That's a heart. And it's an anatomical heart. Oh, <laughs> that's not romantic. Okay. Um, <laughs> over the Alps. Over the meadow and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. Um, I guess this was taken from another plane window. Um, I quite like it. Um, the, you can kind of get a sense of it. The, the bottom of the windows are always a bit frostier and lacking contrast when you shoot through a plane window. Could be wrong. Maybe you were just on a really high mountain. Um, I think it's a cool shot. I wouldn't have the plane so essentially uh, composed, but cool shot from Cheshkayanayaka. I probably said that wrong. Cool shot. <laughs> Pete Aitkins, The Bath Races. Hello, horsies. Um, that guy on the in the background, he didn't waste <laughs> long to just jump straight onto the track, did he? Um, I think I like... Yeah, it. that's what I was thinking. <laughs> My favourite part of the shot is the second horse with its tongue out a little bit. Just like kind of a little cheeky. Um... <laughs> I don't really know what to say. It's it's sharp. Uh, the only thing maybe uh, what would make for a stronger shot was if it were later in the race when they're a bit spread out because having them all stacked up, it kind of looks like there's two, three humped camels being ridden by three people in the middle and then two single horses on the outside. Um, but yeah, I mean, technically nothing really to to criticize. What do you think, Steph? Yeah. Sister I Punk. Agree. Ah, I was so close on that model's name. Well done, Mike. <laughs> um, was that my three? Yeah, I I don't know. three or four even. Yeah. So here you are with Peter E. <laughs> Peter E. You're not even gonna try anymore. Oh, shut up! You're doing names from now on. I don't know. I don't, no no no. I'm good. I'm good. Um. I I like the <laughs> the foreground bouquet. I think maybe even like having it so the leaf of the flower is not like on her face. Um, but her expression is great. Uh, yeah, I think it's a nice shot. I think maybe too much to the right, but yeah. Turn my mic off. Reese. Yes, there you go. Oh, geez. I just looked at what it is. Um, okay, Reese Evans. It's a B. Come on, be more helpful um, than that. <laughs> this just reminds me of the whole three bees on a sunflower, or your song, or whatever. Um, I think the flowers are nice. I don't like the bee. I think it. I think the overall image might be a little bit too bright. Um, yeah. Okay. I don't like looking at it. I just think, you know, we talk about with all kinds of wildlife, Rees, the tourist view. This, you've got the uh, bee's sternum in focus, but it's basically its butt that's the subject. So if it were a Pixar cartoon, then this would be cute because it'd be doing a little wiggly butt dance. But as it is, I think you need the other side of the animal for this to be really an engaging shot. Uh, next one, Steph. Okay. No bugs, thank God. Uh, is this Vietnam? <laughs> if it is, there definitely would have been bugs by the water. Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, 
I think overall, it's really hard to tell what anything is. Um, I'm just assuming that these are a bunch of boats. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's just my, the hard part right now. Because it's like, I don't know what should stay in the shot and what shouldn't be in the shot. Just because I don't know what it is or any context of this, the concept of it all. Um, yeah, the only real I, the only thing I do like up. though is the person. Yeah, he's the only real yeah. subject in the frame. Okay. Um, maybe let's jump out and see if we have any questions because we're deep in the R's now, so we we're making great time. Um, so far, I got a photo of Lady and a video of Lady, so my life is happy. Um. John Musket, any chance you can do an introduction to video from start to editing for video beginners? I have a Z6. Uh, potentially. I mean, in my new setup guide, I go through the settings you want to get started, but not the actual filming process. But yeah, that's a nice idea for a future uh, video. Um, do we have any other questions? You guys are just all business today, huh? We've got to just get through the pictures. I know, right? Um, B but. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> send us any questions. I'm just going to keep rolling then. We next up have Richard Wintle and an abstract ball of curly goodness that looks like kind of, it almost looks like um, when you see a glass blower making long strands of colored glass that's all translucent. I think it's really cool. Um, one of the stronger light painting abstracts that I've seen that is just kind of engaging. It almost looks like something that a computer algorithm would make. Um, if you're in the chat, Rintle, oh, uh, you are Rintle. <laughs> I shortened your name to one word. <laughs> oh, Rintle. <laughs> then um, Manger here, or Sam, <laughs> would really like to hear how you took this one. You're Sam and I'm Manger. It looks like he got those, like, really thin, just light wires. Because you could see, if you zoom in, you could see, like, the, the black cord, but... Still, the circular thing. What is that? What is that? Is that Jesus? I don't know. I don't know. I like it, though. I like the colors. Ow. Robert Granger. His name is like my name. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, what was this taken with? It's got a... Interesting look to it. Uh, edited in Capture One, a Sony A200. Um, F13. So I don't know where the focus wheel's on this. It says it's at F13, unless this was a heavy crop. None of it seems really in focus. It does remind me of a Monet painting if it were softer. But right on the bottom left corner is a distraction right at the top on almost one of the intersecting thirds is another distraction. I don't think either of them are serving you well. So if we were to boop, get rid of them and bring it all in on the reeds and the, the bokeh, which you know looks like lily pads, I think that works better. Excuse me. And then I wouldn't mind playing around with uh, your white balance to see what interesting colors you can pull out of this guy to make it feel a little bit more painterly because it just kind of mm, it's quite harsh how it was um that's what i'm saying the end rory mcclelland uh, I can see the appeal of a shot like this, framing up using the arch, and then you've got an arch and an arch and an arch. Um, and where was this taken? It's got Chinese characters here. This was the Fine Art Gallery somewhere. Um, I think if you had stepped further to your left so you could get out the 
never that comfortable designer chairs that they have in art galleries and the edge of that other doorway to just then have your subjects and the the artwork there but whilst i can see the appeal of it and the beam of light is working nicely the subject stacked up on the statue and then this person here i actually don't think the framing is working quite right on this one steph who's next hello sergey chupis chupis excellent Please give him feedback on his shot that looks a bit like <laughs> uh, Denicio del Toro meets uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, I feel like there's potential here. Uh, I think the reflection is very interesting, but it's I feel like there's too many things that you're trying to draw attention to because there's like these lights being reflected in whatever structure that is then you have this gentleman throwing up his hat um and i'm not even sure what is in focus i feel like choose one or the other i i think in this situation because this is hard for me to like really focus on anything and everything is just so angled it's like everything's a dutch angle or something yeah so because of the yeah. angle you can't really straighten it because you obviously want to keep this circle but I actually think the it kind of almost comes down to just shapes and with a little bit more contrast and the crop I just did on the top, I actually really like how this one came together. Um, and I don't think it is too busy with a bit more space, with the space at the top taken out. So that's a semi pick for me. Um, next one, Stephanie, no bees. But there is a bug. Oh, hey. What? On the front leaf. I don't see any bug. Looks like an aphid. They don't eat much. What? That's not a oh, bug. Okay. A um, mm. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I like that the flowers that are in bloom are the ones that are in the front and then the back flowers. Like, they're starting to, so they're still very green. Um, I like this, and I haven't said it yet during the show, but this feels very much like phone wallpaper Ooh, quality. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's high praise. This does. Um, <laughs> next up... Oh, there you go, Steph. All yours. Timu. Timu. Uh, I mean... Oh, my gosh. Your dog looks like a bear, and I like that, it, like, his best the dog life. is in motion. Yeah. Dog is in motion. You could see, like, his, his like, nails is out as he's, like, running. I think that that is great. Um... If anything, I feel like it might be a little bit too bright because, I mean, the Samoyed is so white and the snow is so white. It's like blending in. Um, but yeah, I, I still very much like it. Pick. Yeah. Um, I think it could come oh, in shoot. from the yeah, pick. <laughs> bring it all in on Mr. Puppers there. And whilst I like it how it is, I do think you could go to town on it as a black and white um, and really separate him out from the background even more and get all that crunchy snow up. I, yeah, the, the claws showing is a nice touch because it, it just kind of makes you, uh, it gives you more of a sense of the kind of ground that he's running on. He's a cute puppy. It looks like it ripped my face off, but so cute. Yeah. Steph, this is Rich Kovac. Yes. And he wants to show you the world. What? Oh, that's <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. Let's see. Dang, how did you shoot this? Magic. That's what I'm wondering. Oh, then that's not fair. You can't shoot something with magic. That's just cheating. Or why right? go to school if he's not allowed to use it? That's not fair. 
<laughs> um, I think it's really cool. I it also, I think wallpaper, like, I don't know why. Well, I can see. Um, but yeah, I, I actually don't know too much about, like, photos in terms of taking photos of galaxies. So I'm not sure, like, what I'm supposed to see, honestly, in this situation. Like, are things supposed to be in focus? Because um, that is probably something that we haven't really, like, I haven't been part of, like, I guess, the episodes that you have done anything on, like, I guess, more astro mm -hmm. to this sense. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what if I can really comment with my opinions because I'm not really sure. But I do like it. I agree with all of that, maybe. Not, I'm not an expert on it either. Um, it's not pin pin shot, but I don't know if an image like this could be. So very cool shot, Mr. Kovac. Yeah. And don't you let Steph put you off. You finish your wizard studies. <laughs> um, I think it's on you, Steph. What do you think of Thomas's Mandarin duck? <gasps> wow. It's um, I can't tell if it's right? it due to the editing. Yeah. Is that from like post from just I like I guess adjusting very, the levels? They are very vibrant birds and that gunk on the water can be too, but I do feel like the vibrance and saturation could come down a little and still look yeah human like. Because a belly is very green, almost like as if it reflects off of the the mossy so I'm just kind of confused a little bit with this image. Nice. Huh. Richard Kovac yeah, I think is in just the tone room. it down a bit. Please tell me how you took that shot more than tell us more. More than that. More than fifty minutes exposure. We want all your secrets. Um agree. Everything. Tone it down a little <laughs> um wait, is that our last photo? Oh my god, we're beasts. We got through all of those photos already. What? Well done, folks. Yeah. So thank you to everyone who entered. If you didn't see your shot, it means you didn't rename the file or you submitted it too late or I messed up, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. Um, so send through any last questions you have. I see one has come through from Edward C. Um, whilst we choose out winners, this will be your last chance to submit questions and then we'll answer them before we wrap. So let's take a look at the picks. Pickety pickety pick. So we have 11 to choose from, including some that I did a silly crop on. Um, now I've got that yeah. song in my head. I can show you the world. The world. Ah, Shine, I, a, I always wanted to be a Vegas singer. Actually a Vegas dancer, but... I mean, with a voice like this, singing just makes more sense. Um, <laughs> so we need to choose, maybe we choose our favorite two each. And if we both name the same one, it means that that one must be the winner. Oh my God, that's so hard though. I need a moment. Okay. I need some time. <sighs> okay. Oh, but then I've got three. Okay, but we're saying favorite two. Okay, favorite two. Um, Got mine. I actually have four in total, but I'm choosing favorite two first. Okay, I'm going to pick one. Okay. Yeah. Gracious. Well, let's okay. see, see yours first. Okay. Why one? I'm going to go... I don't know. It's harder for me to pick two because then when I want to pick two, I want to pick four. Okay, two then. One so then. Like... One. <laughs> okay, okay, one. Okay, wait. All right. I'm going to just go with it. Tell me, Stephanie. Tell me, Stephanie. Mark Meyer. Sorry, it was just this one was just trying to pick. Again. Oh, this lovely lady. Oh, uh, knit cap. Yes, knit cap, making dimples. Very nice. Let's see, a challenge though, because that was one of my 
one is up, not one of my top picks. So now because you only chose Ooh. one, you don't have a clear winner. Do you want to choose a second one? Otherwise, I'll just choose the winner. Okay. My second one is uh, Mike Mina. Uh, that was one of my top two. So Mike Mina and Sister, <laughs> Sister Punk, I think it was, is our winner. So five stars for Sister Punk. And my other was Alberto Coronel, so three stars, so I know that's a runner-up. Uh, Mark Meyer, congratulations, runner-up as well. So, cha-ching, all happened to be three shots of individual women. That's not why they won, though. The, the dog and the bird and the soccer and the Cuban and the landscape are all lovely shots, too. Um... Congratulations. I will be in touch to get Yay. out your prizes. Please check your email, folks. Um, so I saw a question. Where was it? Um, Edward, I have a D850 and I want to start shooting video. I came across the Zeiss gears. Can you tell me something about follow focus systems and what microphone do you recommend? Uh, follow focus, it's pretty advanced. If you're going to go straight into video and buy a Zeiss geared lenses, you, 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 well, it depends which ones you're getting. You could be dropping a few thousand dollars for used ones or six figures for a set of new Zeiss primes. They have a few different ranges. And it's a real skill to be able to manually focus even with geared lenses. So I would maybe rent or borrow some to test out first. They are fantastic lenses. So um, microphone, it really depends how you're filming. I use Rode lav mics for this kind of show. But depending on what you're filming, you might want to use a boom mic to get the whole room. Um, Mr. Wintle, when travel safe again, this is for you, Stephanie. When travel safe again, if you oh. and Matt have a project together, what country would you most like to visit to do it? Oh, Japan. Easy. They have bugs. Everywhere has bugs. Okay, I just we're agreed then. So everywhere is on the table. Don't want to acknowledge it. Excellent. So <laughs> next it will be uh, southern Ethiopia and Laos, two mosquito-ridden places. Um, Japan sounds great. Oh, I don't do mosquitoes very well, though. Oh. Um, mosquitoes are worse. Hey, Sister Punk is in the chat as well. Congratulations on another win. Hey! Congratulations! Mike and Sister, what a collaboration. I almost started singing that kid's um, school ground song, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, great work, guys. Um, really, really nice. So if you haven't already, then do, yeah. uh, so as a reminder, uh, Mike, you get to choose either Steampunk Stephanie or our Dramatic Single Light. And then our two runners up, either the Both are good. tape shoot or Lightroom for photographers. I'll be in touch and you can let me know. But you will need to have an account at uh, for the non-nude courses, learn.mattgranger.com. And for the Rudy Nudies at learn.artnudeportraiture.com. So you might as well go ahead if you haven't already and make an account at them. So when you choose which one you want, then I can add it for you. And if you want to be proactive, you can just email me and tell me which one you want. No need to even wait for me to email you. Um, so Yeah, just message him now. Like email him. Where's right my now? prize? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, folks. Thank you, Steph. It's really nice to have you back on the show. Um, yeah, it's been so long. It's been too long. Air it's hug, so long. air hug, air hug. Air hug, air hug. Um, any other questions? I don't see any other questions. So, Lady just judged me for doing the air hug. Well, I felt ladies so... always been a bit too cool wow. for school. I mean, who names themselves Lady? Rather yeah. than chick, sister. <laughs> um, that may be a good point to end it on. So I hope if you're having time off over yeah. New Year, celebrating <laughs> Christmas or any of the other holidays, that you have a great time with friends or family. Stay safe, have fun, eat Happy lots, holidays. enjoy yourself, be safe. take your camera, create some great shots. Joy to the world. 
We're making hand hearts. Talk to you guys in 2022. Oh my god. I may do a live Q and A between Christmas and New Year, so watch the channel and social media to see updates on that. Don't miss out on the pre-sale for Steampunk. It's only up till New Year, and we'll see you later. Thanks everyone for a fantastic year, and huge thanks to Steph. Bye guys. Bye. bye. Where's my mouse? Here, bye. Bye.